Dealers four and two, essentially a two game lead over Baltimore, which lost at home. You think there are problems. How about Joe Flacco and company? You know, you, you think everything is fine. They win a game, and then you get a report tonight from Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network that Mark Davis Bryant, at least according to him, has requested a trade once out of Pittsburgh. Uh, and then tonight, Mark Davis tweets, that's not the case. He's looking forward to winning a seventh, go to work. So, Andrew, where, where, where is your take on this uh, Mark Davis Bryant situation? Well, my take on Mark Davis Bryant is that I don't think that he position right now to complain about his situation on this team. Given the position he put this franchise in last year, missing an entire year. I know, Bob, you predicted that he was going to be Randy Moss this season. Well, I thought I he think would have a big year. I absolutely well, well, did. Well, so I don't think he deserves to be Keyshawn Johnson and say, just give me the damn ball. And if not, I'm I taking agree. my ball and going home. So if this is another LeGarrette Blunt situation, then I think that Martavis Bryant is going to be the bad guy. Uh, it, it, this has also apparently been confirmed by Mark Cavalli, who's a reporter that I have a lot of respect for. So if this is the case, well, then I think it's a bad job by Brian. What's he upset about? Like, what's he so mad about here? I mean, well, because Juju got a few more snaps. They decided to bump him outside because they wanted to activate Eli going into this game. Yeah, they traded Coates, Tim. I mean, he wanted that this got still, his wish. He's still the second best target right now, I think, unless he feels like the, to use a Tomlinism here, on the ascension is Juju and he's descending. But if he is, it's his own fault because he hasn't been that good. And yeah, the catch the ball. And yeah. I know the quarterback hasn't been on his A game either, but in general, where does he come off needing a trade at this point? I still think he's viewed as the second best target. It's not that there's a tight end there or anything for them to look at. I, I think he's overreacting. Yeah, I mean, I think the other part of it is, like, this wouldn't be a Steeler, you know, it wouldn't be a Steeler's week if there wasn't some silliness like this that we had to talk about that has nothing to do with football. And that's, that's the problem I have with this team is they seem to be so concerned and interested in everything except for actually doing their jobs. You know, Martavis Bryant was supposed to be the guy that put this off. It was supposed to be the guy that made it great. They were going to average 30 points a game. Remember that? They're not even averaging 20 points a game. So maybe just catch more balls and stop <laughs> being a baby. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's good advice at this point. And it looks like Martavis on Twitter has shut it down. At least that's what he says. Agent may be saying something different. All right, let's talk about James Harrison, who was a little uh, upset about not being used for the last three weeks. Tim Benz, he got in there today. They said they are going to use him, and they did use him. I don't know how many snaps, maybe 12 to 15, but he made one of the biggest plays of this game. So the question is, number one, what's gone on? Is this just what they like to do and rest him until the season starts to unfold, or is there something more? No, I think they wanted to use him later. Later in the year, uh, I think that much was obvious. I think they felt the need that they had to, in part because the run game had been so bad. Now, they didn't use him a ton today. They used him enough late, but now I still think they had plans to try to use Chicolo more. I just think that his ascension that Mike Tomlin talked about stopped. And uh, this is the perfect time to bring out James Harrison for no other reason, the psychological battle that he had over Fisher, Fisher, the edge that he had over him. And I think he bottled that and used that at the end of the game to great effect to help tip, tip the balance in the favor of the Steelers. Yeah, I think the other thing is if they're going to just roll him out for the big games, okay with that. I mean, then you have him fresh for the for the playoffs. Um, I, I don't know. Why does he need that, though, Paul? Well, I'm just saying, I don't know. I don't know if, if that's the way they feel. He's 39 years old. I mean, you know, do you want him playing a ton of snaps? I don't know. If you think he's good enough. Well, if you think he's good enough, but do you think can he get make it all the way through where he still has the legs that he has where he can be an impact player? That's the question you have. I mean, to me, I, I think you could probably dress him every week and play him a few snaps and, you know, and preserve him that way. But if the plan would be any big game against a really good team, we're going to play him. I'm okay. You know what I don't like about that is that feeds into the mindset that the Steelers treat one game different from the next. So I hope that they don't do that. This idea that this week Keith Butler's like, I've got an ace up my sleeve. Here comes my <laughs> secret weapon. This is why they lose to teams like Jacksonville and Chicago, folks. Because now suddenly, oh, we see a game we should circle on our calendar. Let's play our best guys now. And I think that feeds into the, the, the outside narrative that the Steelers get up for certain games and don't for others. So if you think James Harrison's a really good player, well, why keep him on ice for different games? Is Cincinnati a big game? Yes. Is this one where you'd use him? Yes. Okay, so how about Detroit? That's not a big enough well, game? I, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I, I'm saying if that is indeed the plan, 
I'm okay with it, but it, but I would rather him dress every week and then use him only four, five, eight, ten sla yeah. snaps yeah. instead of picking and choosing what games they use him if for. He's, if he's only going to be used that much, and that's the only amount of time he's spelling T.J. Watt, then I'd rather have him do that than not play it at all for stretches at a time, like uh, but, basically the first four games uh, of the But year. when Jordan Howard's looking like Walter Payton, why isn't James Harrison in the right, game? Right, he should have dressed that game, or he should have played that game at least. Yep. Well, Baltimore could have used him, too, because he chewed up that uh, team down there. Howard had 167 yards rushing today. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our Smooth Moves segment. Let's go round the horn. Smooth Moves brought to you by Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite, marble, and quartz countertops. So, we will begin with you, uh, Mr. Andrew Filipponi. What is your Smooth Move of the Week? Bob, it's a big one. How about the second oldest quarterback in the league, Drew Brees? What the Saints have done rallying from a bad start. They beat the Detroit Lions today. They almost score 60 points. They beat them by more than four points. And I know in a lot of places that was an important final score. Yes, it was. Well played, Sean McDonough there without reference. Uh, speaking of which, why not? I mean, this one's obvious, right, Bob? Isn't it obvious? What happened to the uh, shirt? You took it off. Well, I'm dressing in layers tonight. Uh, so Syracuse beating Clemson on Friday night. That's got to be the smooth move. Storming the Carrier Dome. Biggest football win maybe since McNabb was there in, what, 99? I'm going to go with smooth move this week. Phil Bennett, you know, former Pitt defensive coordinator who might actually save the job of a former Pitt head coach, Todd Graham. Oh. You saw last night, but they upset Washington. Uh, and Phil Bennett actually has that defense playing the way you're supposed to play defense as opposed to high octane, fast, fast. Let's go after the quarterback and get beat every Phil Bennett might actually save Todd Graham's job, so I'll go with Phil Bennett. All right. And those are the smooth moves of the week presented to you by Armina Stone. And you can check them out. Armina Stone features Pittsburgh's largest indoor stone gallery of granite marble countertops imported from all over the world to give you the smoothest countertops in the area. Score a touchdown with new granite countertops from Armina Stone. College football topics coming up next.